In this video, we're going to be looking at how to create Python expressions and use them to extend our workflow. So the first thing that we'll need to do is put down a geometry node. So let's just go ahead and do that and go inside. Let's delete that pesky file swap. And then let's just create a sphere. And then change the primitive type from primitive to polygon. And let's just change the frequency to something big enough that we can see patterns on the sphere. And then let's just put down a point swap. The point swap here is going to be what we're going to be doing our tests on. So if we go ahead and display it, let's make our first Python expression. So let's just go ahead and use Python to control the color of our sphere using an expression. So if we change keep color to add color, you can see that we have all of these expressions here. And there's a problem with this, and that is that these expressions are all HScript expressions. And how can I know that? Well, every node has a default expression language associated with it. And you can change that default expression language by clicking on this button here, where it says H. So since it says an H there, that means that the default expression language is HScript. Now if we pull this down, you can see that we can choose between HScript and Python. So if we pick Python, you can see that all of my parameters suddenly changed color, and now they're this sort of pinkish color. And what that means is that the expression language that these parameters are us is using is different from the node's default language. So if I have Python picked here as the node's default language, they'll be pink if they're HScript, and they'll be green if they are green or blue if they're Python. And if we switch it back to HScript, green or blue if it's HScript, and once we create a Python expression, you'll see that the Python expressions will turn per uh, pink when we switch to this mode. So if we switch back to Python mode, the first thing that we're going to need to do is delete the channels here for color. So if we control shift click. And the reason why we have to delete them is because they are HScript. There is actually a way to switch them from HScript to Python, which we will go over in a moment. But for now, let's just delete them so that we can freely create our Python expression. Now, when I said that this is the default expression language for the node, I really did mean that it's a default. And this means that now any expressions that we type, Houdini is going to assume that we are typing them in Python. And if we type HScript in there, Houdini is going to get confused and start yelling at us. OK, so let's just control the red channel on our sphere. So let's set green to 0 and blue to 0. So it's just red. So how do we create our very first Python expression? Well, the simplest way is to realize that since our node is our node's default expression language is Python now, any expressions that we type are going to be Python. So we can just start typing an expression normally, and Houdini will just automatically assign it to be a Python expression. And with that, I would like to introduce you guys to the who.hmath module. So if we type who.hmath dot, you can see there are a whole bunch of really cool functions in here. Now a lot of these are intended to simply give you some of the same functions that you have in HScript, like for example the fit functions here. And then there are some here that you may not have in HScript. So what we'll want to do is just do who.hmath.rand, and for now we'll just give it some number uh, as a seed. So maybe 1, 2, 3, 4. This rand function works similarly to the hscript rand function, where if you give it any seed value, it will generate a random number based on that seed value. So if you give it the same seed value, it will return the same number. 
So if we hit enter, that's no good, it's almost one. It's hard to see the difference. Let's just make it like 12. There we go. And this is our first Python expression. But this is kind of boring because it's just assigning one color to every point on the sphere. And in fact, it's kind of hard to tell that it's even done anything because that color happens to be close to one. So it would be kind of cool if we could do the same thing in HScript, uh, the same thing that we can do in HScript, where we just say rand $pt. But unfortunately, if we do $pt in here, the dollar sign is not Python syntax, so that doesn't work. So if we hit enter, it's black, and that's because Houdini's freaking out because we entered something that was not Python syntax friendly. OK, so how do we do the same thing in Python? Well, Houdini has this built-in function called LVAR. So it's the letter L and then VAR, LVAR. It stands for local variable. So if we open close parentheses, so LVAR will just do the same thing, well, something similar to what HScript will do if you hit dollar sign. So in this case, what we'll need to do is we'll need to give it a variable name. Now we can't, we could just say PT here, but Houdini should also freak out about this. Because this is still not Python syntax, this PT is not defined anywhere. Python thinks that this is a variable name rather than something that we're trying to look up, if that makes sense. So rather than being a local variable on the node itself, it thinks that it's a variable that we've defined inside of this function, or inside of this expression, rather. So what we need to do instead is give it the name of the local variable that we're trying to access. So we put it in quotes. And there we go. Now we have a multicolored sphere. So what if we want to use this to do a noise function? Well, we can do that too. So if we just get rid of this part that says rand, or actually, let's just call this point random function. And then I'll just copy and paste it. Call this point noise function. So what we can do is just get rid of this whole part that says rand. And instead what we want is noise 1D. Now you might be thinking, well, I want to give it 3D values, so shouldn't I use noise 3D? And that's a reasonable th thing to think. But the reason why it's noise 1D is because it's only returning one value. Noise 3D is actually true three-dimensional noise, so it returns three values. So theoretically, we could put noise 3D, give it the same position, and then get three different values back for each of these channels and get red, green, blue. But for now, what we want is just noise 1D. So what this function is expecting is a list of components that represents the XYZ position that we want to look up in the noise function. So we can use this the same way that we use the hscript noise function. We could say, make sure that you have your square bracket there, because we're giving it a list. We could say lvar tx, lvar ty, and lvar tz. Make sure that you have your closed square brackets and your closed parentheses. Now notice that this capital TX, capital TY, capital TZ is the same thing that I'm looking up here in the position parameter. It's just in this case, we're accessing it through Python instead. So now if we hit enter, we get a nice noise. So you might be wondering why we would ever do this instead of just using hscript noise. 
And in most cases, it's actually better to use hscript noise if we can. But one cool thing about the Python noise function is if we go over here and we put one more element in the list at the very end. So before the closed square brackets, you can put who.time. Yes, you can give four dimensions to this noise function and it knows how to interpret that. So now if we hit enter, <clears throat> and we just hit play on our play bar, you can see that our noise just sort of loops around. Which sometimes is what we want. Now you could probably duplicate something like this in VOPS, but a simple way to see it is in Python. Okay, so let's take a look at a slightly more practical example. Let's use a Python function to generate a path to write geometry to, and then to read it back in. So rather than entering a path by hand, we're going to generate it based on a few things that we're going to ask our users for. So let's just drop down a ROP output driver right here and hook it up to our point noise function. And I'm going to just change render frame range and set it to five frames so that we're not rendering out 240 frames for some reason. Go back to render any frame. Okay, so the first thing that we'll want to do is figure out where we want to write it to and then we'll make a Python expression that generates that path for us. So I just want to put it on my desktop for now, just for a test. So I'll just minimize Houdini real fast, and then right click and say new folder. I'll just call this folder geo. And then if we just open it up in Windows Explorer, I'll just right click on this and say copy address as text. At least that's the way that you do it in Windows 7. But really you can base this path anywhere you want in your file system, depending on how you want to go about this. I'm just going to be deleting this off of my desktop anyway, right away, so it doesn't really matter for me. So what we're, so what we're going to want to do is have it write the geometry into this folder. But since it's a sequence of BGO files that we're going to be writing, we're going to want to have it generate a name and create a folder of that name and then drop all of our files into that folder as it writes them out. So essentially it's going to create a folder to contain our geometry sequence and then write all of the BGO files into that folder. Okay, so I have this path uh, copied to the clipboard, so I'll just minimize this guy and bring Houdini back up. And let's just paste it in here. So there it is. So we'll want something like geo slash uh, noise sphere backslash noise sphere dot $f4.bgo. So our expression will want to return this path. All right, so let's get cracking on this. So I'm just going to press Control X on here, and let's go ahead and make our Python expression. So if we switch our de default language from HScript to Python, now notice if we start typing something in here, like a equals 10, it doesn't turn green. And that means that it didn't actually put an expression on there. If you're not using backticks, Houdini is not going to recognize this as an expression. So how do we actually force Houdini to, to recognize that we want to put an expression on here? Well, I'd like you guys to notice something. 
if we go back to our point swap and we switch the expression language back to hscript, I'd like you to notice that all of these parameters are green right now. And if I step forward one frame on the timeline, all of the parameters turn blue. And you may recognize that this means that there is an expression on these parameters. And that is indeed the case. If I go back to the first frame here, though, suppose that in my green channel here, I alt click it to create a keyframe. So now it's a keyframe. Notice that it also turns green. And if we advance one frame, it turns blue. And this is because Houdini will color any channel that has a keyframe on it green if you are currently on the frame that the keyframe is on, and blue if you are currently on the frame that the keyframe is not on. So this keyframe is on frame one, so and we're on frame two currently, so it colors it blue. So what does that imply about expressions? If you're thinking that it implies that expressions are keyframes, then gold star. All expressions in Houdini are actually keyframes, and all keyframes are expressions. And that's why even though these are expressions that generate something that's time dependent, so we're not expecting it to change, you're not, we're not expecting the body of the expression itself to change as we step through the animation, although it can. But that's why this is colored blue, and it actually has a frame number associated with it, which is green. And you can actually keyframe expressions in this way. So I could say, well, the position is $TX on frame 1, but then if I go to frame 24, Alt-click to set a keyframe, now it's $TY. And now if we step through, it switches that expression on that frame. And notice that it turns green on that frame, because there's a keyframe there. All right, I'll just delete this and set it back to $TX. So how does this relate to our problem here, where we want to create a Python expression for this output file parameter? Well, what this means is that all we have to do to get Houdini to recognize that we're putting an expression there, if we delete this, is by simply creating a keyframe on that parameter. So if you alt click on output file, you can see that it turns green because it's a keyframe. And now if we click on it, you can see that there's empty open quotes. And that's because it created a keyframe that will return the same value that we had when we created the keyframe. So essentially it doesn't want to change anything other than what you told it to change, which was to create a keyframe. So it just gives you these empty quotes. So now, How do we create a complicated expression like this? Well, we could try to type everything in here and use semicolons to separate lines, but that would be really annoying. So the way that Houdini supports this is we put our cursor inside the parameter that we want to edit, and we press Alt-E. And that brings up this multi-line editor window. So in this window, we could type something like a equals 10 to create a variable named a and set its value equal to 10. Now the question is, how do we get Houdini to display this? Because if we hit apply, you'll notice that if I click on it, it says a equals 10, but I can't get it to actually display 10. So the way that Python expressions technically work in Houdini is each expression is a function. It's the body of a function, in fact. So what we'll want to do is just go down to the next line and say return a. And now if we hit apply, it says 10. So any value that we return inside of an expression will automatically become the value of that parameter. So let's just set up the basic code. So we can say something like base path equals open quotes. And I think I, ah, okay. Yeah, that's good. 
So I'll just remove all of this. This directory I know exists because I already created it, so that's good. So now we can just say return Ah. Okay, so this is something that's a bit annoying about Windows. In Windows, the thing that you use in a path to separate directories is a backslash. In Python, the backslash happens to be an escape character. So what it thinks is that when it, when it sees this backslash single quote here, it thinks that I'm trying to tell it that this single quote is supposed to be part of the path itself instead of trying to just stop being a string. That's why if I type something down here, it's still green because the Python interpreter understands that. There are a couple of different ways that we could get around this. Uh, my personal favorite is to just pretend that we're in Linux. So delete all the backslashes and put forward slashes instead. Now, Python is smart enough that when it saves things, it knows that forward slash is the thing that separates directories. And Houdini is also smart enough to know that. So we don't have to give it backslashes. So now if we say return base path and hit apply, it gives us our base path here. And if we click on output file, you can see that our Python expression is here. And if we click it again, we get output file back. Okay, so let's just go ahead and test this and make sure that's working the way that we expect. So what we're going to want to do is return the value of the path on the frame that we are currently on. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. So for now, let's just have it write out to a single, a single frame. So if we say test.bgo, hit apply. It has that. Okay, so now we hit render. And if I bring up my Windows Explorer here, here's test.bgo. Okay, so that's good. That works about the way that we expect. But now watch what happens if I instead return test.f4.bgo and hit apply. And then we hit render, and I bring Windows Explorer back up. Hmm. So basically what it's doing is it sees that there's an expression here, and then we return some value, and it thinks that it's done. So it doesn't actually expand this whole, this whole string. So there are a couple of different ways that we can get around this. The simplest one is just to do use a function in the who module. We can say who dot expand string and just give it this whole string and return that. And now if we hit apply, you'll notice that it goes to test.0001.bgo. And if we step through the timeline, it updates with the frame number. Okay, so how do we get our name and then create the directory? So there are two different things that we need to do in order to do that. The first is we need to decide how to create a name because test is probably not what we want to write it out as. So most likely what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to have a parameter where the user can specify their name and then it'll generate the path for them. So let's just go ahead and create a spare parameter. If we go to edit parameter interface, and just add a string parameter up at the top. And we can call that something like path name. And label path name. And if this were inside of an OTL, then they wouldn't even be able to edit this expression to break it for themselves. So that's probably the correct way to do this. But for the purposes of demonstration, I think we're just going to do it here. So if we hit accept, here's our path name. So we could call it something like point noise. 
Okay, so now we just need to read that uh, uh, read that parameter value in this expression. Now, unfortunately, in Python expressions, there is no kwargs. Like if we say print kwargs and hit apply, it's empty. And that's because there's actually this error because it doesn't know what kwargs is. So if we delete that, the only way that we can get the current node inside of a Python expression is using who.pdwd, which is okay most of the time. So we can say something like who node equals who.pwd, and then just say path name equals who node dot. So if you remember how to evaluate parameters on nodes, we can just say eval parm. and then give it the name of the parameter that we want to evaluate. So path name. So now let's just for now, go ahead and just return path name so that we know what the value of this variable is. We could also print it, but for now I'd like to just return it. So if we hit apply and go back here, there it is, looks like it's getting the correct value. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make a base path equal to just the base path without the file name, because we're going to construct the file name based on path name. So if we delete this part of it, and let's just go ahead and delete the who.expand string function too. We'll be using that a little bit later. So now our base path is just the path to the geo folder. So the full path, will be this plus a subfolder plus the file name. So let's get the subfolder name. Subfolder name is going to just be path name, so let's go ahead and add that on to the end. So we can say base, uh, say full path equals base path plus uh, path name plus slash. And the slash is at the end because we're going to need to put the file name after it. So if we turn full path and hit apply, let's just take a look at what that's doing. So it looks good. Point noise, we have our slash here. So when we append the file name to this, it won't think that the file name is part of the directory name. And then what we want to do is construct the file name. So we can say file name equals path name plus dot dollar f4 dot bgo. So if we just return file name now, hit apply, you can see that this is what our file name is going to be point noise dot dollar f4 dot bgo because of what we put in here. Now we can put something else in here like blorg and this will update. Let's just call it point noise again. So let's just update full path. Full path equals full path plus file name, and that is not a plus sign, plus. So now if we return full path, this should be the actual full path. If we hit apply, there it is. And if you remember, we actually have to run who.hscript first, or who.expand string, sorry. So if we do who.expand string on full path, and hit apply, there's our frame number. Because if you recall, the $f4 variable does not get evaluated. So this is our simple path construction expression. Now I said that we were going to make the directory as well, but we can't actually do that here. 
Because the problem is that we have this path, but uh, if we try to create the directory in here, then every time it goes to evaluate this parameter, it's going to try to create that directory, which is really not what we want. This parameter will get evaluated a lot. Like if we were to change the name of this parameter, for example, it would evaluate this and try to create the directory if we create, try to create the directory in here. So if we want it to automatically create the directory before we write out to this path, we'll need to do that in a different part of the node. So if we just hit accept here, we're done with this parameter for now. What we'll want to do is to create a pre-render script. Now, if you'll notice, pre-render script has this option here, which allows us to change it from HScript to Python and vice versa. So this parameter, oops, which defaults, this parameter is slightly different from the output file parameter. This parameter is actually expecting you to put a script in there. It is not expecting you to keyframe it and then put a script in the keyframe. This is very important because if you keyframe it and put your script in the keyframe, it's going to ex be expecting whatever you return to be a script that it can then run. So essentially, whatever the value of this parameter is, is going to run it as a script based on what the la whatever language you pick here. Most of the time, you're not going to be dynamically generating a script in Python, so don't put a keyframe here. All right, so if we switch this to Python, because we like Python, click into this parameter and hit Alt-E. And that'll bring up this dialog again. So how do we create directories in Python? Well, the first thing that we need to do is get our path. So we need to know what the directory is that we want to create. So if we say something like uh, who node equals who dot pwd again, and then we say full path equals who node dot eval parm, and we could go through and do all the same code that we used to construct this path again, but then we would, if we wanted to change where it goes, we have to change it in two different places. So it's probably better to just eval this parameter and get the path from here. So we can do eval parm. I believe it's sop underscore output. No, just sop output. It's the name of that parameter. So sop output. And for now, let's just uh, print full path and apply. Now notice that no console comes up. So that means that it's not running this print statement whenever it evaluates the parameter. Instead it's going to run this code when before we hit like whenever we hit the render button before it starts rendering our sequence. So let's just test that. Let's hit render. And here's our console. And noticing, notice that this is erroring, and that's because the directory that we're trying to write to doesn't exist yet, which is the problem that we're trying to solve. So just hit clear and close. Okay, so the next thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to get a path to the directory that we need to create. So we need this part of the path. And there are a couple of different ways that we can do it. But the simplest is to use the OS module. So if we just say at the top here, import OS. OS is a module that ships with Houdini that allows us to deal with the operating system. So it's very aptly named. The OS module has a function called, or a module rather built into it, called path. So we can say os.path. And this module contains a lot of convenience functions for dealing with paths. So you can get, for example, whether you should be using a forward slash or a backslash, whether you're, you're on Windows or Linux. And another thing that it offers us is a function called durname. Durname, you give it a path, and then it returns 
whatever directory is down one level. So if we give it this path, it should just return this part of the path, which is what we want. And notice that if we were to suddenly switch to using backslashes here, because we're in Windows, Python will understand that uh, this is our name function understands that we're using backslashes and it'll still work. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to say os.path.drawName and then full path. And we hit apply. So now when we click render, you notice that's only printing out this part of the path, which is what we were expecting. So that's good. So let's just hit clear and close. So the last thing that we want to do is instead of printing this, we want to create it. So another nice thing that OS gives us is a function called makeDir. So if you do os.makeDir, you just give it a path to a directory to create, which is what we're doing here. And then it'll create that directory for us. So now if we hit apply and we hit render, no more error. And if we bring up Windows Explorer again, there's our point noise directory. If we go inside there, there's our one frame because it's set to render any frame. If we set that to render frame range and click render, something interesting happens. It errors again. So if we middle mouse on this, there's one last thing that we need to do. The problem is that this directory already exists. So it's trying to create a directory that already exists and it's freaking out. So all we need to do is just check to make sure that that directory doesn't already exist. So let's assign the directory to a variable. So this part of the code that create, that generates the directory path, we can say director path, let's say, equals os.path.drawName full path. Now we're going to be using another function from the os.path module. So in this case, what we want is to know whether or not the path exists. So we can say if os.path dot exists dir path. And in fact, we want to know if it doesn't exist. So we want to say if not. And this function will just return true if it exists and false if it doesn't exist. We do os dot make dir dir path. So now if we hit apply, it's showing me this error, but that's old. Now if we hit render, no more error. If we bring up Windows Explorer, there's all five frames. If we change this path name to something like blorg, and then we hit render, we bring up Windows Explorer, and go back up to here. There's our blurb directory. We go inside, there's our five frames 